Life isn't perfect, and neither are we. Nope. But we know how to face our fears. And have some fun. And talk about all the messiest things of life. Like the messiest things. <laughs> get connected to yourself, get connected to others, and get connected to the life right in front of you. This is The Connected Life with Justin and Abby. That's me. That's you. And you. You know what I've come to realize? Oh, was that a dramatic pause for me to respond to? <laughs> <laughs> you, what? What have you come to? I thought what, you were just going to tell me. What have you come to realize, mm-hmm. Justin, that um, Monopoly deal is no different than Monopoly? Mm. So it Monopoly, ends faster. Monopoly deal is... It ends faster. Yeah, but it still ends in the same amount of anger and rage and disconnection as any Monopoly game that's ever been played. I don't know. We just played it recently for the first time, and I felt very connected to you. Yeah, because you won. <laughs> yeah, I felt like, oh, I love this. I no. love spending time with you. Abby is one of I the biggest manipulators at games that ever. That is not true. So I'm sitting Things there. Things I felt misunderstood by for our entire she, marriage. She's two games in and has won both of her first two games with me and then she p- p- plays a move and I'm like you you can't do that and but I didn't know how I had won two and, games but that didn't mean I understood how all the cards right, and then she's like I've never played before I'm like you've played two rounds and you've <laughs> throttled me on this and I bet I bet marriages and entire families have fallen apart due to Monopoly. I think Monopoly should be banned. Monopoly <laughs> Deal is a card game. It's a card game but version of Monopoly. But we like it. Yeah, it's so enjoyable. <laughs> uh, I would say, like, how many fights did we get in in our first few years of marriage over cards? Oh, so many. So many. Yeah, that's that's where we triggered. Oh, 100%. And melted down. And got angry. And our personality types. We both types feel is misunderstood. So deeply. And we both feel like the other person is unfair. Sure, yeah, we do both feel that. <laughs> Which one is actually unfair is, you know, still to be still to be proven. I mean, you still have that as your... What's that? Like your... You you still believe what you believe, and I still believe what I believe. <laughs> yeah, we've come we have to been learn. Actually, you know what we should do is we should get a counselor on here to work us through our cards. That would be a fun That'd episode. That would be a fun episode. Uh-huh, because right now that. we have just agreed to disagree. That's what we've done. <laughs> we haven't gotten to the bottom of it. If you're, but that's the thing in marriage. You're like, uh, we have enough triggers to work through that this card playing one doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll but just if, get mad every time we play. If uh, if you can relate and your entire family has fallen apart over some form of family fun board game or something like that, you or should let games. us know. Yeah, you should let us know. I would love to hear about the stories about that. <laughs> <laughs> but we actually play games a lot and really enjoy it and really love each other. Mm-hmm. And even in that moment, we didn't trigger at each other. What's interesting is that when people... You pe- didn't agree with me? Wait, what? What do you mean? That we have a lot of fun in cards. And oh, like, we have a we, lot of fun in we cards. We don't trigger all the time. No, we don't. Yeah, yeah. No. No, we don't. But you were totally manipulating that situation (laughs) and you would have held my feet to the fire on that. No, no, no. Because later in that card game, you wanted to undo something. And I said, sure, I will let you. Yeah. Yeah. No, it was like this. I'll let you. (laughs) No. What I was trying to make clear is like you were asking to undo something. I asked to undo something. We're now even. Oh, oh, yeah. 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 yeah, Uh yeah. Uh Somehow, though, you only remember that I asked. No, I did because because (laughs) people are already triggered right now. They're like, mom, dad, stop fighting. Uh uh No, it's fun. But people end up. There's actually some fun to this story being told. Right. Hmm. And 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 it, and it moves into what we're actually talking about today. Does it? Yeah. So we'll see people act out in card games and in life. Oh, that's true. <laughs> in ways that you're like, why are you acting like this? Why is this happening right mm-hmm. now? Why mm-hmm. are you upset about mm-hmm. this? Why are you freaking out about this? Why are you looping on this? And you can oftentimes walk away feeling very offended at them and have a lot of judgments. Like this person is just an asshole at card games. Or they just don't care about people or mm-hmm. they're just screwed they're just, up. They're just cheating. They're mm-hmm. just manipulating. <laughs> you little. All the words I wanted to call you. I was like, is that appropriate? Is that appropriate? <laughs> Is dick appropriate on yeah, a podcast? It is on ours. Yeah. A jerk. Uh-huh, I don't know. Poopy head? Uh, I guess. Uh <laughs> you know, but inside of it, 
Uh, oftentimes we, we hold on to these judgments. We just kind of look at people and kind of minimize them down into, uh, I don't know. We devalue them mm. really inside of our heads. And the whole thing is that we don't understand their story. Oh. We don't understand the perspective that they're coming from. Mm -hmm. We don't understand, um, why they're choosing to operate the way they are. We don't care to understand. Yeah. And one of the big things that we want to talk about today is our story and other people's story. Owning your story and mm -hmm. understanding other people's stories. Because there's a, a massive um, power in owning our own story mm -hmm. that begins to cultivate and generate deep amounts of compassion and understanding and humanization mm -hmm. because... Um, you know, it's easy in a card game to be like, this is just a terrible human being <laughs> who, who's out to destroy and conquer me. Um, but that it's not it's not that simple. And we have these conclusions that feel very simplified. And because oftentimes we don't want to put in the energy and the effort to dig down like it yeah. actually takes sacrifice to understand our own story mm -hmm. and it takes a huge sacrifice to understand someone else's story so we're going to start off with um kind of the conversation around our story first and why don't you go ahead and jump into that abby yeah well thank you justin i think i will okay you do that <laughs> that sounded so robotic from both mm -hmm. us. um yeah this is a, a i i talk about this a lot um with people because Owning your story is, I think, one of the most powerful healing things you can do. Yeah. Being honest with yourself and with others about what you have experienced, what you have gone through. I, I want to say this. One of the things that has helped me the most in life in understanding my story and understanding other people's stories is um, understanding trauma, like becoming trauma informed has dramatically helped me. And yeah. I, I wish I could just, I wish it was something they taught in schools. Yeah. So that you could recognize what trauma behavior is. Especially for teachers, it'd be super helpful. Oh my gosh. Uh, so many people get mad and angry at people for doing behavior that is a trauma behavior. Pretty much anytime we're acting out, it's because our nervous system is not regulated. Mm. And people are, are doing crazy things in when they're not regulated and what they need is a safe place to be able to get regulated like a safe place to get back connected to themselves you know something that is interesting is like if you think about like a baby falling asleep on you like babies often fall asleep on uh parents or caregivers or sisters brothers nannies whoever um and there's this regulation that happens where your body can start to relax mm. when you are connected to another body that is relaxed and oftentimes At peace yeah yeah and um like your heart rate can sync up to their heart rate and your breathing mm -hmm. can be a and so it's it's this um amazing thing that we have the ability to regulate with people. It also means we have the ability to not regulate with people. <laughs> to deregulate everybody. Yes. Where our <laughs> nervous systems, we're in chaos and then that energy creates chaos and we just pass chaos back and forth. Uh huh. It's like an extremely hot volcanic potato that's being <laughs> tossed back and forth into e each other's faces. Oh, yeah. And uh, as a Did you say volcanic potato? Uh huh. <laughs> yes, it's this magmatic. <laughs> made that word up. <laughs> lava like potato. <laughs> Past ah. the hot potato. Yeah, yeah. It's it's more than just hot. Um, I I just I had a conversation with someone. Um, uh, there was a husband and wife where they had gone through an exchange where it escalated into the physical violence back and forth. Mm. But as you listen to the story, there's moments where there's an opportunity for regulation and to to just, oh, this person's just needing regulation they before need they, they need reassurance. They need reassurance. Connection. Mm -hmm. They need to feel that they're loved mm -hmm. and they're safe. And you have both of them at the same time not needing that at the same time and, and not so knowing how to get to it. Give it to the mm -hmm. other person. And so it starts the spiral starts to slowly happen until it's escalated into physical violence with each other. And you're like that could have been stopped three miles back before yeah. it got to that. If you knew like, oh, what's going on inside of me is I need to f somehow get something to regulate myself to yeah. peace and safety. Well, and this is why what we're talking about is so important. So for me, I 
like now I can look back and definitely see that I've been in trauma responses for years. Right. Uh, amen from you. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> I have had I have had trauma reactions over and over and over again. It, but if I'm not owning my story, which I didn't for years, like right? You can't in acknowledge of what my what things were like and what my experience was like. The more I acknowledged the truth about pieces of my story, the more I mm-hmm. recognized it and owned that it affected me, the more my trauma behavior made sense. So before that, you often can just have self-hatred if you're not the person you want to be. Right. You're like, what is wrong with me? What the hell's wrong with me? I why need to change. Why can't I do this thing? Why do mm-hmm. I keep, like I have, mm-hmm. you know, a client who's like, why do I keep sleeping with these guys when I don't want to be? Um, and if you're not owning your story and where, where and what you're reacting out of, then you are going to beat yourself up and you're going to feel like you're a complete failure. And yeah. And you can't get to compassion. Nope. Because humanization only comes in the understanding of the story, yeah. right? And so that, that well, g- go ahead and continue because I was going to say there's a lot of reasons why we won't connect to our story and I want to talk about that. Yeah. Um, so for for me and all the clients, and I can't tell you how many clients that as soon as, so what happens is when you are not calling reality, reality, there is a disjointed part inside of you. So if you're in an abusive marriage and you're saying it's not abusive, there's like this lie inside of you that's going on. And so you can't actually heal. You can't like the disjointedness. It's two different like planes. Or if you um, I know a lot of people who are abused as like sexually abused in their childhoods, um, but don't own that part of their story. So this there's this reality that's going unacknowledged. And uh, one time my counselor said like, reality not being acknowledged is one of the things that makes us crazy the most. Yeah. And so I know so many people that when they step out and they like say, share to their family, no, this happened to me. And then somebody else is like, Oh, that happened to me. Oh, that there's a thing inside of us that is like, this is reality. Yeah. Like my reality is a reality and it matters. I, I had a conversation with someone on, on that note. I had a conversation in the gym the other day with a random person that um kind of was chatting with. And they were talking about how good their childhood was. Like, mm-hmm. my mom really loved me, right? Yeah. My mom was such a good mom. She really loved me. And then she was talking about how she has four children and then she has 14 grandchildren. Yeah. And as she was unfolding the stories of her children and her grandchildren, you hear uh, uh, one of the kids went to jail and then one of them has gone through multiple marriages. Then one of them has a drug addiction. I don't know. Yeah. Like you, you, you're seeing the story and you're like, hmm, what's happening here? And then she starts talking about her childhood and, and everything is painted in like, yeah, I don't know why my kids got into this. I don't know what's happened. Right. And I'm like. Oh, what is she denying about her story, both past mm-hmm. and present, both how she mothered, both in how she was mothered or or fathered or all of those parts of the story, right? And so she goes into like, yeah, my dad was an alcoholic that was physically abusive and then he just left and my mom married five different guys as a kid and then that was just the men she married. She probably had four dozen different men sure. that she was with and and then she starts talking about mom was never really around and then she keeps saying like, oh, but my mom loved us so much and it was yeah. a really good childhood and I'm like, you have absolutely denied your story. Mm-hmm. Like you're not connected at all to it. Well, and again, that means you don't have compassion or understanding on what is going on in your life because of that. And one of the things that I found is people can't hold nuance. Right. So it's either my mom was great or my mom was horrible instead of like my mom really loved us and because of the life and, we had, and, it and, caused and, me a lot of the pain. The word and is a really good word. Yeah. That's part of holding nuance is being able to say and. Yeah, both can be true. Mm-hmm. Nuance, the, the duality is both can be true that you could have a mom who loved you a lot and she could have done her best and you could have felt really loved and there could have been lots of areas where you had to self-protect every time there was a new man and you didn't know what was going to happen and there wasn't stability. Like both can be true. And most of the time people are holding one or the other. I either love my mom or I hate her. She was either the best or the worst. And I find that most people, even just to, 
they they can't do that middle ground. So it really is they're either the best or the worst. And I'm like, mm-hmm. no, most parents are both. My parents were both. Yeah. You know, there was things that were amazing about them and wonderful and loving. And there were things that I had had to work through a lot of pain from. Mm-hmm. Oftentimes, you know, uh, let, let me also say this. In that story, she couldn't figure out why her life turned out the ways it did. Mm-hmm. And she couldn't figure out why her kids' lives were turning out the way that they were and mm-hmm. grandchildren's lives. And uh, again, if we won't acknowledge our story, we can't easily go, oh, okay, that makes sense. And then yes. we can't get to solutions. Yeah, And it's very easy to be inside of judgment where it's like, what the hell is wrong with my kids? Right. I don't understand this. Totally. Oh, but you won't actually allow yourself to understand, oh, this is what I came from. Mm-hmm. This is what I experienced. So, of course, I acted out. And, of course, they're acting out. Yes. And, produ- and producing compassion so through that. The more you understand your story, you have a lot of moments like, of course, I did this to protect myself. Of course, mm-hmm. this person was trying to survive and this is what they learned to do. Mm-hmm. I was having a conversation with someone the other day and they were like, I, I'm afraid that you think I'm really screwed up. Mm. And I was like, I do think you're really screwed up. <laughs> <laughs> I like to help people's fears. And, and then I said, I think I'm really screwed up. I think Justin's really screwed up. I think I went through like a long list of people. I'm like, I think we all live in a world where there's pain. And there's, there's not messiness. one human mm-hmm. who gets to escape betrayal or abandonment or rejection or needing something they don't have access to or wanting something. You know, like every human experiences pain on this planet. Yeah. And so we all create ways to survive that pain Mm -hmm. subconsciously. We all create ways to cope with loss and fear and shame. We're all trying to manage pain. Everybody's trying to figure out how to escape pain. It's just true. Some people are trying to figure out through drugs and alcohol. Some people through constant relationships. Some people through working all the time. Some Some people through being successful pastors. (laughs) Totally. Some people from being depressed on the couch and laying down every like I'm like half of these but um, (laughs) but the idea is we all are learning how to survive and so that judgment of your I'm like they thought that I looked at people through a lens of judgment Mm. through like and I know their behavior and their behavior is is messy sometimes yeah at times yeah but I also know that so is my behavior Mm -hmm. (laughs) my behavior is destructive sometimes Mm mm-hmm And I can still have a really good heart. And the more I've owned my story, the more I understand the destructive pieces and the more I've been able to change and transform my life because you can't change something. It's like wanting to drive your car a different direction, but refusing to get in the driver's seat. Yeah. I think that one of the things that's terrifying about looking honestly at our story is it begins to bring up the, what does this mean about me? What does this mean about other people who are uh, in my story? Like if, if I if I start acknowledging like uh, obviously we've, we've gone in depth with my family uh, pains and it's easy early on to enter into something like that and be like, oh, my story is that there was neglect and there was a lack of nurture. Does that mean that my parents are horrible? Does that make me a horrible kid for acknowledging mm-hmm. the what they did? And then if if they really did make these mistakes and this really was this painful, does this mean I'm just effed up and, and broken? Yeah. Um, does this also mean now that I have to look at pain? Because the minute we start to acknowledge pieces of our story, then we also have to acknowledge pain that exists mm-hmm. inside of it. And we can no longer compartmentalize mm-hmm. because part of not looking honestly at our story is a way of compartmentalizing pain. Absolutely. Right? Like, Oh, my family was great and it was perfect. And it could have come from a basically generally pretty good family, but there was disconnection points. But if I acknowledge like, hey, there was still problems, even in the best of a family that I still was taking care of and things like that, like then I have to feel some pain inside of that. Yeah. And I think that if we're aware that there are solutions to pain. Yeah. Right we can actually begin to enter into our stories. Well, and it's always like a funny thing, right? Because we don't want to face that pain, but that means we're in constant pain. Like most of the time, like when I was compartmentalized from my story, Mm -hmm. yeah, there's grief that I didn't have to face, but I was constantly creating the same 
life situations over and Cycles over again. Cycles of pain that kept and asking themselves out. I was just stuck out. in pain. You're like, how does this keep happening? Yeah. And so, and, and so, yeah, it hasn't been, it's very, it's been very painful to look at my life realistically. Yeah. Painful in the sense that like, oh, I didn't realize this and this, but also unbelievably relieving because when your soul is like, oh, I'm acknowledging reality, something inside of you lines up and yeah. gets into alignment. And then when you, when you can own like, so once I owned how crazy my childhood was, I also then could own how crazy I've been. <laughs> totally. And I've been taking ownership probably for the last like three years with you over and over again. Like, oh my gosh, I see now that I was doing this behavior. I see now yeah. that I've been doing this behavior. Yeah. Um, and Which so can start repairing relationships as well inside of that. Like when we, when we can own our story, then we can even repair relationships. I do want to add this. I think that... It, oh, oh, sorry. Go ahead. It ultimately relieves you from shame. It does. I think people are scared That's where of my shame. mom got a ton of freedom from shame. Yeah. Because, it, you know, we've had her on here and she's been... In, she's experienced so much victory by saying like, yeah, I was out of control. I was in trauma. Mm -hmm. I acted out and like hurt you and mm -hmm. hurt the family inside of that. Yeah. My hormones were off. Like she's just acknowledging her story. And she was like, inside of it, it was so relieving because I was able to actually forgive myself yep. with the underlying unforgiveness that was just like haunting me in the mm -hmm. background anyways. Because if I owned it, then I could get the thing out of me that was hiding anyways. And then I could repair this relationship and get close and find love and let it in. Oh, yeah. I think that people are living in this sense of mystery. Yeah. Like. Why it, do I do what I do? Yeah, I don't get it. There's so much mystery to my story. And most of it is revealed. Most of the mystery is solved when I'm willing to just. Yeah. Like whatever, whatever need I had as a kid, I learned a way to get that met. Right. So if I if I didn't feel safe, I learned how to be on my own and now I'm a loner and this is how I get that need met. Or mm -hmm. I learned, you know, we most of everything goes back to us learning some kind of behavior. I think that um, people do have a, f a fear that if they acknowledge it, they'll just realize they were messed up. But for me, that's actually given me a lot of peace. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I am messed up and and not fighting against that. Like I, I try to tell people you can actually accept it and not have it be your identity. Right. It's not all that I am. I'm much more than messed up, but I am also messed up. And mm -hmm. and I think like, oh, if all I do in this life is learn how to be like an inch less messed up than I was when I started, then I will feel proud. And it, and if it takes me years, like when I recognize how many things I have to work through because of some really crazy dynamics in my childhood, then I'm like, oh, it makes sense that I'm still working through this. It's so relieving. And oh, it yeah. makes sense that I had that reaction to that person. And oh, I like, oh, I'm actually on guard all the time. And oh, this is it. It begins to help create that story of compassion. And I think that the conversation even is less about whether or not I'm messed up and more about freedom yeah like i am i have the opportunity to progressively discover freedom yeah is really what what we're dialoguing about yeah i agree i mean acknowledging our messiness is the is is the um springboard to freedom and it's interesting because one of the things i felt so vulnerable about on this process for me is the idea of showing that i've been affected by things yeah. to me that is what vulnerability is everybody different things are vulnerable to different people but for me showing that somebody can affect me or that something affected me it can sometimes feel hard and so that conclusion of being like yeah my parents loved me and had really good hearts and there was a lot of things they did that were painful and it affected me mm -hmm. i think that one of my coping mechanisms historically not now but in the past was you can't affect me yeah uh, there was a there was a moment where there was some some physical pain being inflicted between my mom and i where she was being um hurtful towards me and in that moment i had said 
I will never cry again. I'll never give you my tears. Mm. Right. And I was just like, okay. Mm -hmm. And I chose to be unaffectable. Mm -hmm. And that's where through, through the remainder of my journey in at home in high school, I was like, I don't care. You can't Mm -hmm. affect me. And I was still being affected. There was still pain there. It was, I was cutting myself off from that. Yeah. But it was so powerful when I actually was able to say, no, all of that affected me. Yeah. Because that's when loneliness and abandonment started shattering uh-huh. and started inside of my heart when I could say, no, the world does affect me. Mm-hmm. It does matter how people speak to me and it does ma- matter how people treat me. And it has been sad how I've given my heart over to certain people and they haven't treated it really well. Mm-hmm. And the avenue to that, as I said that I was affected in those ways, then I could figure out how to heal and how to let people in with boundary wise inside of my soul of like, okay, I am affectable. Who am I going to be affectable to? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's not all or nothing, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, this is an interesting because it's also the more you allow yourself to own your own story, see why you did what you did, understand. and, And just, and I think even just this ownership of like, you know, I think shame really keeps people from owning things. But Absolutely. what they don't understand is that the the more you face it, the less shame you have. We've already said that. But I was thinking about other friends of mine who had parts of their story that they've never told anyone. Yeah. And that creates this disconnection inside of you where you're not getting love and you're not being known. Like being known and being loved while you're known is one of the most important pieces yeah. of healing. And so if we have secrets that we've never told anyone... It it blocks out our ability to, and that's, so part of owning our story is not just owning what was done to us, Mm -hmm. but owning what we've done. Mm -hmm. And I would say the same thing as your mom, like it's painful for me to look back and have to tell you all the things that I can see I did wrong in our marriage. Mm -hmm. Like that's not fun, but I feel that feeling inside when I do it of alignment, like, no, but this is truth. This is the truth. I did this thing Mm -hmm. and it hurts you. And I understand why I did it and I'm not excusing it, but just owning what I did wrong brings healing to me. Mm -hmm. But anyway, what I was trying to transition to is uh, how that helps you be able to see other people's stories. Yeah. So you want to talk about that? Well, I don't. Yeah. I, you know, when I looked early on in my life, I was extremely judgmental. And I think that a lot of judgment has been broken in my life. I don't think I'm extremely judgmental. Are you judging my judgment? (laughs) (laughs) For a second, I thought you were really triggered. No. (laughs) When he paused, I was like, oh. (laughs) She's like, oh God, what's happening here? I'm like, no, I'm just just playing around. (laughs) I just stared at her. (laughs) You did just stare at me. I was like, whoa. I was like, I think we've acknowledged this before. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah, no. um, So- not acknowledging any of my story. I look at people and be like, what the F is wrong with them? Mm-hmm. Why don't they get their act together? Why don't they, uh, why don't they um, manage their life better? Why are they so destructive? Why, whatever it is, you know, it's all those, those questions. And, and it's also not acknowledging even my current actions. It's not just my past story, but I'm not acknowledging my current actions and how I'm actually behaving. Again, that self-denial, so yeah. much denial, but in it, I had very little ability. Like I could be comforting to people like, oh yeah, like I'm caring and kind, but I still would walk away and be like, F an idiot. Like just change this and you're fine. Totally. Right? <laughs> and it'll all true. be better. Why don't you see it? Yeah. Um, Why do you keep making those life choices that you know are ruining your life? Mm-hmm. And once I got so connected to my story, I am able to just be so tender and look at people and be like, of course they're there. Like I was having a conversation with someone this morning who was, who was kind of having some battles with some judgment they're feeling towards people. Mm -hmm. And they were like, I just want to tell them to to buck up and what is wrong with you? Just buck up and, and, and get past this and stop acting this way. Right. And I was like, have you considered the idea that everyone is in their own personal hell here on earth? And from that perspective then tried to like navigate like oh their personal hell their torment that they're inside of inside of their soul is probably the reason that they're responding this way and and they're 
gradually seeing light in their life enough that can get them out of their hopelessness and their their feeling of tragedy because there was a very much strong judgment of they're acting like such victims Mm. i'm like yeah there is a victim mentality there but also i can hold the truth of there's a victim mentality that exists and have compassion and understanding and how they're trapped inside of it right and they were like yeah i i don't think i really consider that idea yeah that like oh this is the hell that they're inside of and so that's what was able to progressively happen for me as i was able to go oh yeah, this is, of course they would act like this. This is part of the hell that they're in. Well, and honestly, again, like th- we talk about it. This is why I love the pathway to freedom so much. Uh, you guys should be mailing and get on the waiting list for the next time we do it. Who knows when that will be, but because we actually teach about what's going on inside of your body and your mind when, when you're getting stuck in triggers. And when I look at trauma behavior, when I look at b- any behavior that's annoying or frustrating, mm-hmm. Most often they are in a triggered response. Yeah. So they are using a survival skill to survive. And nobody's like people survival. Often people's survival skills are not pretty. Yeah. Sometimes they are. As a side note, uh, a thought that came through my head is that people might ask is like, well, if I do see through the lens of compassion, does that mean that someone can keep getting away with murder inside of my life? Oh, that's so true. And that's something that we need to understand, like part of setting boundaries and holding people accountable is the idea is it starts with a foundation of compassion. Like I see you, I see your story. Mm -hmm. I love you. I have care for you. Also, I have to address the destructiveness that you're acting out of towards me inside of our relationship. Oh, yeah. And we can together acknowledge the destructive behavior and look towards solutions and healing processes or If you don't want to, okay, I'm going to have to figure out ways to create an avenue towards connection that isn't um, destroying me. Yeah. I've had a lot of people that I've had to set major boundaries with, Uh but the difference is doing it out of judgment and like, you're an idiot. That's why I get out of my life and more like, oh, I see the little kid in you that really needs love. I just can't. it's not a healthy thing for me to be right. I don't have the capacity and I can't be untriggered enough in your, Mm -hmm. in how you're interacting to be able to interact healthily with you. And it's interesting because there's, that's part of knowing ourselves too, right? Mm -hmm. In knowing myself, I can look into a situation and be like, all right, this person is extremely destructive in their behavior, but I don't feel triggered by any of it. I don't feel like, um, my my worth is being challenged. I'm being ran over and, and anything like that in engaging in this situation with them. So I have the capacity to engage in this moment with this person and I'm fine. But when I know myself, I might go in the in, in an instance just like that same instance and go, actually, in my soul, it's getting thrown around in all kinds of ways. And for the sense of my own personal self-worth, I'm going to actually have to disengage from this. And it was like that with my grandfather. There were ways where I could go love my grandpa Mm -hmm. in his messiness and participate with him and have soul boundaries where I'm like, oh, I'm okay. I'm actually not feeling destroyed by this behavior. And then other times where I'm like, I'm feeling so destroyed by this behavior and this person will not listen and they're hard headed that I'm actually going to have to remove him out of my life for a season. Yeah. And, and that's hard. And it wasn't, it didn't come from a place. There were times where it was an F you, but it evolved into a compassionate place of like, uh, I see grandpa, I see he's messy, but I see I don't have capacity. Well, it's interesting because I think people need to villainize other people in order to set boundaries. Right. To justify. Because it's like, I have to have a justification. You have to be really bad for me. In to order be for me to do this. Instead of being like, even what we're saying, like, I don't actually, I can't be I just don't regulated have enough to do, de- like your triggers trigger me enough. I don't know how to engage to be able this. To engage us. Or like my self-worth, like I love you, but the destruction you're doing, I can't have in my life. Um, I read this the other day online. It was a post and I lo- I loved it so much that I thought I would share. Um, Cause this is the concept that we're talking about is learning how to break judgment to see beyond. Teens don't just get married too young. There's a reason teens feel there is more hope in creating happiness in their own marriage than at home. Children don't just run away from their homes. There's a reason children decide that the world is a safer place than home. Mm. Teens don't just crave motherhood because their internal clock is ticking. 
There's a reason teens feel it's more likely to give the love they have or get the love they need from their own children than in their own family. Mm. Children don't just start having sex at a very early age for no reason. Children having sex tends to be a sign of neglect by the by adults in their life or signals other types of abuses. Mm. Children's behaviors are messengers. The more we understand them, the more cycles we can break. Just a reminder that as adults, we need to be doing much better in how we interpret children and teens' behaviors. Now, I would just say how we interpret everyone's yeah, behaviors. Yeah, humans. Yeah. They are usually symptoms of what is going on internally and at home. Instead of labeling a, teen or a, a child or teen, we need to be asking more questions. Instead of saying that child is very sexual, maybe we can ask what is happening for a child that age to be sexually active. Instead of saying they are such troublemakers, they sneak out of their home at night. Why don't we ask what is happening at home that the child feels they need to sneak out? Instead of saying, wow, she ruined her life running away with her boyfriend. Why don't we ask what made it better for her to leave her house at such, such a, a young question. age yeah, than good. staying? It's hard to break these cycles if we aren't paying enough attention. But the concept is looking at behaviors like, oh, they're, they're a liar. Okay, so they had to learn how to survive a... Like, I know somebody right now who is a liar. <laughs> and uh, so for me, I have to get to compassion. I know they grew up in a very abusive childhood. Right. So everything is I have to survive. Part mm -hmm. of survival is I have to figure out how to lie. I have to make you happy. Mm -hmm. And so lying is the easiest way to do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's that thing of uh, and looking for the compassion. Like most people learned bad behaviors. And then... And so how do we see people through that idea of they have their own story? If they are inflicting pain, they're in pain. I think about the idea of the criminal justice system, and I think it, it, needs, it does need reform inside of prisons and everything else. Um, but I look at a situation where I see um, someone who is on drugs and they've just robbed someone you know, right, and stolen things. Like the other day we had our... I was so livid. I had my PlayStation 4 stolen out of our mm. gaming room here at the office yeah. because one of the drug addicts had wandered up here in the office yeah. space and, and stolen it. And I look at that scenario and I'm like, can I hold in tension the idea that I was wronged yeah. and that felt I felt violated mm -hmm. and that I have compassion that the person is like, oh, I bet inside of their story there's a lot of painful stuff that happened to le that led to drug addictions, living on the streets totally. and the survival that's happening. And also, could I even hold, could I be okay with like, yeah, I think it's fine. Like if someone needs to be locked up and, and, and then even in that, like, can we have a society where we hold someone accountable and put them in prison or put them in a lifetime out? And also, have, have compassion have compassion and even in that system have ways to help rehabilitate and i think those yeah. are conversations that are happening but i think that 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 um consequences and compassion should be able to have a relationship that's balanced and that's where i find i think that humanity finds healing well and this is why i love duality so much is because most of the time people either have compassion for themselves or compassion for the other person. And there's no nuance. There's no, we both have space here. So I've watched people as soon as they, I have so many clients that they have compassion for their parents so much that they won't actually own their story or they have compassion for their partner, their marriage or their work. The, so much compassion for, they're like, I see the brokenness. And I remember the, the most unhealthy relationship I was in when I was, a teenager yeah, was because I had so much compassion for him. I understood his brokenness. Mm -hmm. He had been through a school shooting and his dad had committed suicide. Mm -hmm. So anytime he had bad behavior, I was like, Oh my gosh, but I understand why. Oh, it makes so much sense. And compassion is not a reason. Like if you have to abandon yourself to have compassion for someone else, it's not true. Compassion. It's not genuine compassion. No, mm -hmm. uh, it's actually codependency. Mm -hmm. Because what I should have done, what it would have been healthy is for me to have compassion on myself and on him. Like, okay, mm -hmm. I bet his heart isn't actually as bad as the behavior he's doing towards me. Right. But also my heart is worthy of not having this behavior. And it's not my job to be around bad behavior 
in order to fix of, somebody. Yeah, and I'm at the cost of my own soul. At the cost of my own soul. And how and, I'm doing that. And so there is this thing of you have to own your own story. You have to see that other people have their own stories. And then there has to be a an ability to hold both of those at the same time. Yeah. I think that when I was thinking about the idea of the guy who stole my PlayStation 4, I mean... I, I, I went, I, I, my emotions would have drug out a lot longer in the past. They had a pretty quick flash where I was like livid for about two seconds, yeah. then defeated about how crappy Reading yeah. is with all of its terrible crime and everything falling yeah. apart. And so I had my hope, hopeless spiral for a second. <clears throat> and then I went from that into like acceptance real quick mm. of like, all right, I just accept that this is gone and this is kind of what's here. Then there went into questions of how can I be part of a solution inside of this space, mm-hmm. not just here in this moment. You know, I was working through a lot of stuff, but one of the things I thought of is like the greatest justice in this moment is that something gets healed in that man's heart. Yes. Like that he would find the light of life. Mm-hmm. Like I think that we, our idea of justice for a lot of the wrongdoings because we don't have compassion is punishment. Yep. Like I want to inflict an equal amount of pain into your world that you've imparted to mine mm-hmm. or I don't care at all about anything whatsoever and just go on with your life and I have compassion don't care what happens. But to me, the highest form of justice is that there's an active thing that happens inside of someone's world that liberates them. Mm-hmm. So... Yeah, so I think that's uh, that's why when people are having behavior that is painful for me, I often pray for healing for their heart, that yeah. they would experience love, that they'd get to feel secure, that they'd get to feel safe, that they'd get, you know, because I'm like, that's ultimately what every human needs. They need love. They need to feel safe. And they need to feel like they matter. Mm-hmm. Every human needs that. And so. And that can only happen when you humanize someone. Mm hmm. Instead of villainizing them, and 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 if again, if you're not if you're not humanizing your own story, you can't humanize other people's stories. Everyone's just a robot that should be just doing things better. I wish I had a robot voice. I was going to try to do it, but I don't have one. I am, I am a, a robot. robot. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> well, um, if you guys enjoy this, pass it around. We think it's important. If you feel like you've gotten a lot of breakthrough in your own life story because you have owned your story. We'd love to hear about that. Yeah. And hey, just a really cool announcement, quick announcement. Uh, Living Fully Live this year, uh, we said startups were going to happen in October on our website, and we've changed that. Uh, Living Fully Live 2022, startups are going to start, uh, uh, signups are going to start happening in January of 2022. So we're going to start signups after the holidays, and that'll officially run in March. We actually pushed it back. One of the things that... Um, I wanted to do as Abby and I are focusing on our master class with our master consultants that we're trying to help raise up our first year of doing a master class for consultants, Mm -hmm. an extreme in-depth year long experience to become consultants. I, uh, I, you know, I've been digging into the conversation. What does it look like for me to really father this group? Well, Mm -hmm. I think that one of the things um, that, oftentimes keeps getting re-imparted through leadership Mm -hmm. is a sense of orphan mentality Mm -hmm. where the people who are leading mothers and fathers, you know, um, I'll I'll just speak into the fathering element, but um, are disconnected from their leadership in a way that keeps producing people that keep feeling orphaned. And I was like, I don't know what it looks like to to activate that sense of fathering in this space, but I want to dig in and really pay close attention. And so I was like, you and I dialogued and it was like in order for me to ramp up and get in the flow of that and really figure out what that looks like, at least for me and also some um, um, uh, getting a little break from my soul as well to everything, we would just uh, push that back. So I know a lot of you guys, we've, we've created three or four years, three years worth or four years worth now of <laughs> LFA starts in January. Well, LFA is going to be in March. Sh- signups are starting in January. Yeah. But that's exciting but, that they but get you to can, sign up. You can get on our website. I think soon we're going to, they can sign, uh, they can at least be on the waiting list. Yeah. On, on the website, there is a pop-up when you go to Living Fully Alive and you click on to purchase uh, the course, it'll bring a pop-up and you can sign your name in there and it'll put you on the waiting list mm. and you'll be emailed the day that uh, signups start. Open. 
like yeah, that. open for that. And so it's going to be a real easy thing to funnel people into that as they're wanting to get on. I know we've had like a ridiculous number of people reach out and be like, it's October. Why can't I sign up? How is oh. what's happening? I'm like, I know we're changing. Yeah. So, um, it's really exciting though, because this is like living fully live is the course that people take in order to be in the master class. Mm-hmm. It's like the prereq class. So mm-hmm. I feel really excited about how many people are wanting to do this. Yeah. It's really it's exciting. Fun. So, Hey, remember rate, review, subscribe and share. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Hey, figure out your story. Share your story. Share something about your story. You've never shared with somebody. That's yeah. Good homework. Ask yourself, what are the parts of my story I've been avoiding? Yeah. Is there parts of my story that I'm just like ignoring and and, and I'm scared of and and I don't want to look honestly at? You know, it's interesting. Uh, Rachel was just on here last week. Yeah. A couple couple weeks ago. And Mm -hmm. she has literally something transformed in her life by her sharing her story. Like just getting it out there. Yeah. And I think about, I know so many people that it transformed their life to just own their story. Mm-hmm. have a voice about it be honest about it it's it's so empowering and it liberated other people it liberated other people in her family it liberated other people who've messaged in like it's so powerful so own your story guys own it own it own it own it own it own it